Uh, hello, my name is uh, Clive Scott and this is part 23 of a course on Java and it's about anonymous classes. As you can see from this, this is the uh, final um, uh, fourth course that's um, about nested classes and um, I'm going to, as usual, cover things in quite a bit of detail. Um, certainly a lot more detail than um, you'll find in any textbook. Um, at least I've never seen what I'm going to mention in any textbook. Um, so uh, oh, let's um, get started, I suppose. Okay, so what's um, an anonymous class? Well, um, well, it's, it's a bit, um, it's a bit like an anonymous array, um, in in a sense that you, with an anonymous array, you can just construct one and put it in wherever you want. Same sort of thing with anonymous classes. If you need a particular class, uh, you just make one and put it in. Uh, except of course it's a slight difference and the class you make is actually a subclass of the thing you specify so there's a little bit of difference there um, typically you're going to use it as a parameter to a method or to initialize some sort of variable and of course this does make the code look very strange but uh, <laughs> you get used to it um, and, and in particular this these anonymous classes and so on there absolutely essential for things like Swing, which is Java's uh, graphical user interface. So let's have a look at one anyway. Here's, uh, here we've got this class animal here with uh, a method in it. Let's speak. Here's the method. And uh, all it does is uh, print out animal noise. Okay. We've got pet here. And we've got this animal here. Uh, this thing, a uh, dog, which is a type animal. And here we're going to create uh, an anonymous class. And this is the way you do it, you just say new animal, uh, left bracket, right bracket, and that semicolon is important, and then just put whatever you want in there to define what you're defining here is basically a subclass of animal. So what you get here is going to overwrite that override that version there. Okay, so now in this method main, when we uh, do new pet dot dog dot speak. What happens is it will print out woof like that rather than animal noise. Uh, that semicolon, of course, is important. Now, if if um, that semicolon was there and you didn't have that, of course, you'd be making a new version of uh, a new instance of animal. So, um, I mean, the construct is fairly straightforward, really. Um, right now, um, uh, you'll notice that the class that you've made it doesn't have a name. The only thing you know about it is, is it's a subclass of animal. And the whole purpose of anonymous classes is to is to override particular methods in a, in some class to, to customize them to suit the particular need that's necessary that's uh, required where, where they're put. Um, now um, animal of course um, it could have been an abstract class this could have been an abstract method, for example. That's quite common to see that. Um, it could uh, could even have been an interface, in fact. And in that case, um, what what happens would be um, you'd end up with um, with a class which um, anonymous class which implemented that interface, and the it would be a subclass of object which implemented that interface. Um, either way, um, you wouldn't have to change pet at all. Except as I've just noted down here, of course, if it was an interface you were you were dealing with, um, the method speak would have to be public. <laughs> That's a minor point, but that obviously applies to any sort of um, any sort of uh, implementing of interfaces. Okay, so that would have to be public if uh, if animal was an interface, because interface methods are. Are public, of course. 